It's your man, Jay Gray's Report, and welcome to the College Football Weekly Wrap-Up, Week 1. Y'all know how we get it in, so let's get it in. Wrapping up the five, top five ball games of the weekend, so let's get right to it. Now, I know you boys see this sisak I got on. I ain't breaking rules just yet. I know it's after Labor Day, but I don't have on white shoes. <laughs> I'm going to retire after this weekend, bruh. I had to put it on on Tuesday because Labor Day was yesterday. It is what it is. But I know the rules. So now let's go on to the first ball game. Yeah. We got number three, Oklahoma goes down to play number 15, Houston. Now, I picked on you to win this ball game, and they went dull on me. Bob Stoops is notorious for going dull on a boy. I figured that they that Houston wouldn't be ready for the big time. They wouldn't be able to show up when the lights and the cameras came on. And they did. Remember, Houston is actually auditioning for the Big 12. They're one of the teams that everybody's talking about. Hey, they got 11 teams they want to interview or or have a pitch to be able to get in the Big 12. These boys going to be in the Big 12 because it makes sense. It's in in the geography. And they uh, came in and beat the Big 12 champion, defending the Big 12 champions last night, uh, this weekend. Now, 33-23, Houston wins this ball game. They got a young cat, Greg Ward Jr., Boy came out there to put up 312 yards, two touchdowns. This is the only the third time in school history that Houston has beat a top three team. So that's huge for these boys. Now, Oklahoma on the other end. These done couldn't run the football, wet the bed all over the field. They first possession, they had 61 yards rushing. The last 11 possessions, these done had 16 yards. Now, how in the world are you the Big 12 defending champ? Go on the road, can't run the football. I, I'm giving Baker Mayfield all kind of props, saying the boy going to show up with his with his swag suit on and gaiters, et cetera. These done didn't do a thing. Went out there and wet the bed. Boys couldn't catch the football, couldn't run the football. But Houston, you got to give them their props. Let's move on to the next ball game. Now, we got number four, Florida State. Shows up in Orlando to play number 11, Ole Miss. Now, here's the deal. Ole Miss came out the, out the gate, jumped all over these boys. By halftime, it's 28-13. They ready to roll. They the boys start celebrating. Then they got in the locker room and pulled a dud Jeremy Dunst on the boy. <laughs> Everybody in the locker room put on a gas mask. I came out there looking dull in the second half. They scored six points in the second half, bro. I mean... How do you just fall apart in the second half of a ball game when you got these boys on the ropes ble- bleeding from the mouth and then you go out there and pull a Jeremy Tunsil on a boy? <laughs> now, here's the deal. You got a freshman quarterback, true fre- uh, a red sh- shirt freshman quarterback, DeAndre Francois, the, <laughs> the ghetto freshman, went out there, went to work on these boys, put up 419 yards, two touchdowns, and then he ran for another 59 yards on these boys. But I will have to say before I get out of here, old Doug Dalvin Cook, second second quarter of the ball game, he got a wide open touchdown, and this done trying to switch hands so he can get ready for the celebration and drop the ball out of bounds, and they have to settle for a field goal. Doug, you can't be the number one uh, contributor on the ball club making stupid mistakes like that. Now, let's move on to the next ball game. Florida State wins this ball game, and I picked that game, bro. Now, let's move on to the next ball game. We got number 10, Notre Dame. Goes down to Austin to play unranked Texas. Now, I told you boys in the preview that this was going to be the signature win for Charlie Strong. And you boys doubted me. I told you. They win this ball game in overtime, 50 to 47. They Charlie Strong took a chance on, on, uh, on Sunday night and started a true freshman. The first true freshman to start at the University of Texas at quarterback since 1944 when Bobby Lane did it. They had a cat called Shane Bouchel. Now, that's Bobby Boucher's uh, (laughs) great-nephew. They just spell it differently. He ain't claiming that done because he used to be the water boy, so he wanted to be the quarterback, so now he's Shane Bouchel. But really, he's Shane (laughs) Shane Bouchel. Oh, let's get into this game. Shane Boucher, freshman, went out there, Boucher, and went out there and had 280 yards, two touchdowns as a true freshman. But then they brought the senior off the bench to run the football in Tyrone Swoops. He carried the ball for 53, he had 53 uh, yards, 
and three touchdowns and a huge touchdown at the end to win the ball game. Hey, this is what I'm talking about when you talk about doing for the team, doing what's best for the team. Notre Dame, now we got to figure out one thing. Notre Dame was played two quarterbacks. They had Deshaun Kaiser, <coughs> the black Dutchman, or German, <coughs> whichever one you, you prefer. And then they also had Malik Zaire. Now, we just got to go ahead and, and, and make Kaiser the starting quarterback. Kaiser's numbers, 215 yards, five touchdowns. Make him the starter. Quit, quit trying to do too much. You can bring Malik in from time to time on special circumstances, but going forward, Kaiser needs to be the starter in this ball game. And then you got to leave old Duh, uh, <laughs> Duh Leprechaun at the crib next week, bro. Leprechaun out there smelling like weed, like I said, being Duh. He out there trying to break up the dice game. Bebo had his son. Y'all saw Bebo had his son at the game. He out there teaching him how to play dice on the sideline. Yeah, that's what the real homie do during the game. They just look up from time to time, look at the scoreboard. <laughs> Doug old Leprechaun went over there trying to talk tough and act tough and got the brakes beat off of him on the sideline by Bevo. Hey, let's move on to the next ball game. We got number two, Clemson. Goes down to play Auburn. Now, Clemson wins this ball game 1913. Deshaun Watson, 248 yards, one touchdown. He threw one dub pick. Here was the problem in this ball game. Even though Auburn couldn't get any offense going, couldn't do anything. They stayed in the ball game. They hung around the whole ball game. Doesn't make sense that Dabo Sweeney couldn't get these boys going. They got a whole lot of work to do if they're going to be the number two team and get where everybody thinks they're going to get. If they're out there struggling with the Auburn, the War Eagle, the War Pigeon, the War Parakeet. <laughs> to the next ball game. Now, we got number 20, USC, went down to Dallas to play number one, Alabama. Now, here, listen, listen, bro. Here's the problem I got with USC. Well, first of all, Alabama beat the brakes off these boys, 52 to 6. This is the problem I got with USC. USC come out there talking a hundred dollars worth of noise before the game. Everybody, out, they out there barking and growling, boys trying to hold them back from running out on the field, and all of a sudden, Alabama walked down, put that foot clean up that butt and now they they running off the field crying and and, and and just embarrass themselves bro you can't go out there talking trash if you're not ready to play at the level that these boys playing at hey it's your man jay graves report from the jgravesreport.com or you can hit me up on twitter at jgravesreport so you can holler at your boy